Okay, cool. Um, I'll start. Uh, one of the one of the requests that we we had, or suggestions that we had, was to talk about procrastination. Um, it's one of those universal topics. I think everyone can yeah. uh, can relate to that, and yeah. in in some way we we deal with it. Um, so one of the things that I looked at, um, just in terms of getting some thoughts together for this, was. Uh, an aphorism by Nicholas Nassim Taleb, where he says that it's a sign of weakness to avoid showing signs of weakness. <laughs> and I think it's really appropriate in yes. terms of procrastination. Yeah. One of the things that I often f um, pick up when I talk to people about the subject, uh, the number of excuses mm. that we make. Yeah. I think it's quite amazing what you can accomplish when you're procrastinating because I'm just thinking now about that diagram with procrastination aisle and uh, like the amount of laundry I do when I don't want to do something else or the amount of baking I do or <laughs> all of these other things that you're you avoiding which are, something else. Yeah, while you're avoiding something else. And it's not a good thing. It's uh, James Clear says that you write or actually it was Warren Buffett. You write your list of 25 priorities cut it down to five and then throw away the 20. <laughs> yeah. So it's about priorities. Yeah. Because you just said <laughs> that, um, you know, in order to to avoid something that you want to do, you end up doing other things. Yeah. Um, look, and there's value in doing nothing yeah. as well sometimes. <laughs> so yeah. just sitting and thinking. But if it's nagging at you, this thing about, well, I want to do that or I must do it, then, uh, then that becomes problematic. Yeah. And I think in, this, in the sense that we encounter it in the workplace, as people procrastinate about something that they want to learn, yeah. an area that they want to improve on. Yeah. Um, I think people also procrastinate about raising an issue that they might see. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a big one. Yes. Yeah. And the longer you wait, obviously, the bigger it becomes. So, so it's one of those things that we need to learn how to overcome. Yeah. Yeah. What I've learned is that kind of the starting point is, is checking your mindset, you know. Mm. Where am I? So if you think about the, the different mindsets, and there's a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck, which uh, I highly recommend. Yeah. Um, but also in the slight edge, which I've mentioned before in a previous podcast, um, specifically they talk about the two mindsets, you know, the value-driven mindset versus the entitlement mindset. Yeah. Now, see a lot of the second. See a lot of the second. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of those words where people get really defensive when you point out to them that that's an entitlement yeah. mindset. But So what's the difference? The, the one is... is um, the entitlement mindset is, is, well, what have you done for me lately? Versus the value-driven mindset is, is, how can I help you? What can yeah. I do for you? Adding so value what is, to other people. Yeah, so yeah. what does that have to do with procrastination and the mindset? Well, the one is, is if you have the entitlement mindset, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to come up with excuses, yeah. reasons, which are actually excuses yeah. and not, not real reasons of why I cannot do something. Yeah. Why can I not improve my diet? Why can't I exercise? Which was you know, such um, frequent topics yeah. when it comes to people not reaching their goals, um, learning something new, yeah. learning to play an instrument, learning a language, learning a language. <laughs> yeah. It's all of those things. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's a great example that you mentioned, you know, even about raising a, um, concern. a concern mm. or sharing an idea, yeah, which is something which we want plenty of. Yeah, we want to be made aware of where we can improve yeah. things. We want to hear new ideas. And our whole team wants that. I mean, when we did our blueprint, which we'll talk about probably in the next week or two, um, one of the things that came up was speak up. And, yeah. and and honesty and things like that. There's a, so our team actually acknowledges that this is something that they want to get better at. Yeah, so what are some, some practical tips for how do we <laughs> overcome procrastination? Yeah. 
So as mentioned, I, I listened to a James Clear um, talk last night, and he's got some really cool practical examples. You can check out his channel and talks and yeah. that. But uh, one of the things was the Warren Buffett idea, write down your list. Actually, while we're on that topic, he speaks about priorities and that it's a quite a new word in terms of the English language. And the word that came up was priority, because you can only have one most important thing. <laughs> and I found that such an interesting statement. He said it took quite a while, but we changed it to priorities and it's incorrect. You can only have one priority. <laughs> At a time. One, one most important thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, I mean, you can obviously have other things that facilitate that or that help you to achieve that. But, but the one main priority is the, is the idea, I think. Yeah. So <laughs> in, in the slight edge, Jeff Olson also makes a point of you can only live in the present. Yeah. What is the present? What am I doing now? And I see the correlation there between, between living in the now or mm. living in the present uh, and the priority, yeah. the one thing that yeah. I'm going to focus on yeah. now. Yeah. So anyway, so <laughs> back to the practical, <laughs> to the practical, practical <laughs> tips. Yeah. So how, wh what is like the first step in terms of overcoming your procrastination? Write down your priority. What is the one thing you want to achieve and remind yourself of it, I suppose. Look at it every day and, and then start taking those actions. Well, but straight away. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that there's, there's something that is very closely related to that. Yeah. And I think um, so something that requires a little bit of thought. In terms of that goal, yeah. or what, what you want to do is why you want to do it. Yeah. Which of your values does that goal speak to? Yeah. So if you, if you say to me, I have a goal, I'm going to learn, I don't know, German. Mm in the next month or yeah. the next six months yeah. well why do you want to do give, that and if that's purpose. not clear yeah. if that's not clear and if you want to then reduce that to how does that fit in with my personal values you can find something that you can hang that on to you know that association with yeah because when you when you actually have to do the work uh, and you start coming up with all these excuses <laughs> um, you know you mentioned early, uh, yeah. earlier the, the the other things that you yeah. start doing <laughs> to avoid that. Thing. Yeah. So there must be a clear why in terms of why am I going to spend this time yeah. to do this now? How is it going to benefit you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because obviously it must benefit you. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, I mean, the other thing, and we spoke about it a little bit yesterday, and we've spoken about it in a previous podcast, is the, the habits, forming a habit, and that's part of it. So... So getting into some kind of a routine where you do something every single day. Um, Jeff Clear, I mean, James Clear also talks about that. He says, uh, write down the things that you do every single day and then um, write down the things that happen to you every single day. So I don't know what his example was, the sun rises or something like that. And then see where you can create a new habit or add a habit to the habits that you already have during the day. So you associate a new habit with something. So. It's so important. I mean, so many of, of, of these experts or people with strong opinions about this tell you about um, the importance of routine. Yeah. And not just in terms of forming habits and overcoming procrastination, but generally how good it is for us to have these habits mm. or, or um, routines. Yeah. I think the most important thing is, is showing up. Yeah. Taking action. Taking action. We talk about that in every podcast. Execution. Constant <laughs> action, yeah. yeah. So we've determined values. We've, we've got a goal. And now we've got to get into that, into the doing yeah. part of it. Yeah. So knowledge is not power. Knowledge <laughs> is potential power. Yeah. So knowledge without action doesn't it's mean useless. anything. Yeah. It's useless. Yeah. And it's about consistently showing up. Yeah. And even if it's something very small and seems insignificant, do you realize over time that it becomes something bigger or that, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and making that visible, you know, yeah. marking it off on a calendar. Yeah. I know lots of people advocate using a simple calendar. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it is that you do, yeah. is mark it. Yeah. Because that will motivate you. Yeah. That will kind of remind you, hey, you know what, because we, we, we often see the, the, the mountain 
instead of just focusing on moving forward yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the next step. Correct. Yeah. I think it's Mel Robbins that uh, that said in, 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 in one of the talks that... Uh, you know, if, if, if it's about going to gym, it may actually have been James Clear as well. There's so many mm. of them and <laughs> so much talk about this yeah. subject. Um, I say that if you, if you have trouble committing to going to the gym, just commit to I'm going to put on my gym yeah. gear. Yeah. Because once you've done that, you, it'll Half motivate you to say, well, okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm already dressed for this. Yeah. Let me go there and let me just walk on yeah. the treadmill for a minute. And when you're there yeah. and you've walked for that minute, you're most probably going to figure out, well, I can maybe do another yeah. minute. And so, and so many little tricks that yeah. you can figure out for yourself what works yeah. best in terms of. But back to the, back to the point about um, establishing a routine, figure out in terms of this goal that you want to achieve, where is the best time in the day? For you to try and fit that in yeah and then commit use your calendar yeah jordan peterson's a big advocate of um use your calendar yeah. go and set up the day the ideal day for you don't bullshit yourself um if it's about learning that new language don't think i'm going to spend 12 hours tomorrow and yeah. I'll be fluent in it. Yeah. So be realistic about those things and start small you know, yeah. and build on that confidence. Yeah. Um, the habit part will come. It will come naturally. Once you've done that for a set period of time, it will feel awkward and weird to not do it. To not do it. Well, I can say that about the park runs I've started doing. Um, in the past probably three or four years, I had done about three park runs randomly when someone would invite me i would think okay cool i'll do it and and i wanted to do it every week but i never got into the routine but recently i've started doing it and now i think i'm on my fourth or fifth week in a row and i can't imagine missing it on a saturday morning i love doing it and i think i can see that i've now it's something that i actually really enjoy the first time if i think back the first time in this little set that i started i thought i would never finish and i, yeah. would, I felt completely exhausted and I thought why did I put myself through this and then I went the next week just to challenge myself and it was so much easier that I realized I could do it every week so I think that that's a personal example of where just committing and going the next time even when you're not sure if it's for you or not and you, ma you mentioned you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're now kind of in yeah. the fifth iteration yeah. of this you yeah know? so it shows how quickly um so I know we're kind of running out of time at the <laughs> moment, but it would have been interesting to explore the, the, what I said earlier about how does that fit into my values? What yeah. is the why? Because there must be a compelling yeah. why you're doing it. Yeah. Even if the why is just, um, you know, it beats I enjoy the, the it, fresh air. <laughs> you enjoy the fresh yeah. air. Or, yeah. you know what, it, it kind of helps me overcome something else, you yeah. know. Um, some people prefer to sleep late on a Saturday. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be some yeah. world-changing yeah. why, as long as that why makes sense yeah. to you. Well, it makes my weekend feel a little bit longer because I do wake up a bit earlier and do something and you feel like you've achieved something. It's a nice, it's a really good feeling. I would encourage other people to park run. <laughs> yes. If it's for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we'd, all, we'd, yeah. we'd like to get some feedback in terms yeah. of some of the tips that we discussed this morning. Yeah. Uh, and and tips that people found work for them. Yeah, because we're all different. And So please share with us. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Thank you. So this was Let's Be Frank about procrastination. Thanks. See you next week. <laughs>